Hello there, I'm Mark and I post two tutorials like this every week, so please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about Affinity Photo, about missing features. Don't take me wrong, I love Affinity Photo, it saved me tons of money because I could cancel my Adobe subscription and I switch to alternative software like Affinity Photo, that was a great move and I never look back. But there are still some missing features that I have to work around from time to time. Keep in mind, this video today is very subjective. It all depends what kind of work do you do in your Rust editing software. In my case, I'm usually doing some kind of graphic compositions. I'm not really a photographer, so I will not import like a amount of photos to enhance them all in one or stuff like that all right so with that in mind let's get started the first missing feature for me is auto blend there is no auto blend in affinity photo it's why i have to use photo p photo p is also a free, free alternative to adobe photoshop you can use it for free with ads or pay 10 bucks for three months or something like that. And here I am now inside Photopea. Take a look. I will do quite extreme use of this feature. So I'm going to auto blend this face here. Let me just cut it out with my selection tool. I will just copy and paste the face on the new layer. Then position on someone else buddy <laughs> and as you can see the tone of the skin the color saturation everything is out comparing to the backdrop layer so we don't need to do it manually here in photo p i can simply go and auto blend that's really handy that's something still missing in affinity photo in affinity photo we need to adjust multiple layers multiple adjustments all right so let's click auto blend wait a second and done perfect much much better right and that's of course extreme example but you can auto blend objects to the new background and stuff like that and you can have all of those adjustments like tones and stuff like that automatically so very helpful second feature is cutting object from the backdrop automatically I know we can do it manually with quick selection tool, but sometimes I just need rough cutout and I cannot do it in Affinity Photo. Here I am in Adobe Creative Cloud Express, a free web-based program that got very interesting feature. You can simply drag and drop your images and then they will remove the backdrop for you and it's quite decent. I hate this kind of features in the past, but nowadays they are really good. They improve a lot in recent years. So sometimes I just need to cut out for like miniature for YouTube or something like that. I don't want to spend 20, 15 minutes cutting something precisely. I just need this auto remove for the backdrop. Here it is. Take a look. And I can use it already in my composition. That's very handy. So I use Adobe Creative Cloud Express to make my rough cutouts so I don't need to spend time doing them or in affinity photo next thing is a lack of support for dds files so there are surface images to textures very very often used by software developers by game developers so people are designing games and they need support for this kind of raster file as you can see you can use plugin for gimp gimp for adobe photoshop but you cannot open and edit them in Affinity Photo. And I know this is deal breaker for some people. It's why they cannot switch from Adobe because they need these files. They're working with these files daily. All right, so we got lack of DDS support. Next thing I want to talk about is lack of animation panel. That's some additional feature of Photoshop, as you may know. And for this purpose, I also use Photopea. There's no animation panel in Photopea, but if you rename your layers and add underscore A underscore in front of the layer, you are telling the program that now you are doing animated GIF and each layer will be a frame in this GIF. So for example, if I simply duplicate the same image and slightly modify with a liquify tool like this, okay, I got one copy, few more copies, so duplicate the layer, again, liquify, tool in the filter menu 
and I modify the image with liquify tool. This way each layer I'm creating right now will be used as the frame in my GIF. You will see it in a moment. Let me just create a few more of those copies. So maybe one more. Let's go with liquify again. Modify the image a little bit. And now we got one, two, three, four, four layers. And because I add underscore A underscore, when I export this as GIF, the program will export this as animated GIF. Take a look. File, export as, and the format we need is GIF, of course. And take a look here. It's already animated GIF. So I wish I could do something like this in Affinity Photo. You got some options here. You can make a boomerang animation. You can reverse frames and stuff like that. So very handy if you need to create animated GIF. And for this purpose, I also use Photopea. All right, so we cannot do animations. We also cannot use uh, 3D objects. I mean, real 3D objects. That's something that is in Adobe Photoshop. And in the past, I never used this feature. I never see a need of using it. But nowadays, I see it more and more often. People are making 3D objects to use in mockups and stuff like that actual 3D objects that they can rotate inside Photoshop. That, that's really cool. And this is totally missing in Affinity Photo. So I think this is something that they should also add in the future updates. So here are my five missing features in Affinity Photo. Of, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, it all depends on your workflow. For, in my case, those are my five missing features that I would love to see in the future version of Affinity Photo. How about features that you miss in this great software? Drop in the comments below and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye!